three play on now. <clears throat> All right, so officially I started my recording. I don't know if you're recording this as well, but um, you wanted to talk about um, our post game or not post game the matches we had earlier with um, uh, yeah. me versus your launcher. Yeah. So I uh, I had some ideas that I wanted to try out uh, specifically in the grappler matches you might have noticed i uh i was trying out two different play styles so in the beginning i uh i tried to go for a play style of launcher that was capitalizing on every opportunity to take away white health so i was not trying to give you any white health at all for conversion and just deny your access to conversion to see how that changed your approach to getting in on her yeah, because uh, I know with launcher, it's it's very hard just with her toolkit to not give people white health. You know, classic example is her her five B. It yeah. has no cancel options. Uh, you know, once you use it, that's that's the only thing you can do. And uh, because it's not an MP move, you obviously are going to give white health to the opponent. Uh, and it's not even that much. So it you know it's kind of a no brainer for people to say okay after. I take the soft knockdown, you know, it's my turn to go in. I have the perfect amount of conversion to just, you know, use whatever advancing normal, uh, projectile invincible, whatever move I can use, I can use this white health to get in. The white health that she gave to me. Yeah. So my whole thought process was, okay, let me deny my opponent conversion as much as possible I, and I see how that changes. It. Yeah, yeah. And um, so what that meant was that one I couldn't use any of her normals right I couldn't use 5B that has no cancel options like I said before uh, 2B actually is the same thing although you wouldn't really expect to cancel 2B into anything because she's just setting a grenade but same right. principle I, right. I can't use that because I can't risk you I can't risk you uh, realizing what I was trying to do and then running into my, my shit on purpose to get that little bit of white health, you know? So I, I tried to minimize those situations and I found myself quickly realizing, well, shit, the only thing I have that I can use is her her A normals because that's the only thing I can reliably hit confirm and then go into like 4S or if you're too far away for me to 4S, I can just do her laser uh, and take off that white health that way. But there's no way in hell I'm going to use her 5s in neutral as a way to start combos because it's just it's too slow and it's too telegraph so yeah realistically if you are going to play launcher that way you are limiting to yourself to you know a majority of her moves because that's just that's just the nature of the character she is going to give you white health there's, there's nothing she can do about that mm. um, and it's funny because i contrast that play style with Ranger a lot, uh, and you think about Ranger, um, he can take away your white health at any moment if he wants to. That's true. Uh, and he could also choose not to give you white health. So think about, you know, Ranger's full screen presence versus Launcher full screen presence. Uh, she <laughs> has 5S, the, the rocket, which is a slow ass move. Yeah, you, know, you could roll that. You could jump it. It's it's very easy to get around that. It's not anything that's difficult. It's really there for its pro projectile uh, priority, and that it will beat other things. So you can't just sit there and throw stuff at launcher because then the launcher player can be like, oh wait a minute, I have this. I'm just going to use this over and over again. Right. So it's more of a way to force people not to try to outzone her because you know she could sit back and play lane. So, right. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's it's not a threat. It's not a threatening move at all. Uh, or 6S, you know, kind of the same thing where the characters that can duck under it, they'll just duck under it. And uh, I'll cut to the, you know, Berserker matches a little bit. Uh, I noticed that you were catching on to my approach of throwing out 6S, forcing the opponent to duck where, you know, they can't move, they're going to be in that spot. And then I try to run up a little bit and then try to catch them with a 5A if they try to, you know, approach me or get away because I... I kind of have the advantage there, but you recognize the situation as, okay, well, he's going to run up and try to 5A. Let me just jump over that and uh, punish with a jump in. And if I commit to her follow-up 5A afterwards, 
then you'll already be well above that in the air and in a prime position to come down with any button you want. And it's it's basically a free counter hit. So that was good on you to recognize that strategy because a lot of Thank people you. don't. They get stuck in that, you know, okay, well, I ducked. Now it's my turn. And it's not really your turn. It's like, um, I forget what it is. It's like mental frame advantage. I think that's what the term is. Where Or like a mental stack, I think. Is, is it mental yeah, stack? Yeah, yeah. When you're doing things, I, I think it's like mental frame advantage. I'm not sure. I gotta look at that fighting game glossary again. Yeah, there's, there's too much. But that, it's, you know. it, you're, you're, yeah, you're you're doing things where it's not just it's not strictly numbers, right? It's not. I hit you with this. You blocked it. I'm minus three. I'm minus one. You know, you have a move that's six frames. I have a move that's seven frames. With the frame advantage, it turns out that it's actually my turn still, not yours. It's none of that. It's, I threw something at you, you ducked it, you obviously don't want to stand because you don't want to get hit by this thing. Yes. But then that gives me enough time to position myself in a way where if you try to take your turn back, it's actually not your turn because you decided to duck this move and you allowed me the space and the time I needed to position myself where it's actually my turn. But, you know, <laughs> that's just a myth, really. If you understand launcher's moves and you understand and what you can like get around or how to deal with it you could do things like you did where you duck it and then you jump because a lot of her moves on the ground are going to hit you low so you have a chance to jump preemptively and get over that um, so going back to grappler that's that's kind of why I didn't want to also well you know what, what was I talking I was talking about 5S uh, <laughs> that's also why 5S is not really a uh a solid you know zoning option for her because people will just duck it and if you get close enough there's always the option to jump for anybody who doesn't know that 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 is how you get around that that's the counterplay to that strategy uh so yeah launcher i think i was talking about launcher and ranger full screen presence those are launchers two normals that are full screen and it doesn't cost her anything to keep you uh full screen everything else you know is you're gonna have to spend meter um and yeah, that's they block it. You're giving them white health, and you know that's just the whole conversion thing over again. Right, which you know, jump oh. in here. Um, I was gonna say that launcher and ranger. Like another thing to appreciate about DNF duel is the fact that we do have, <coughs> excuse me, two zoners, and they effectively play so much differently. You know, um, definitely launcher yeah. has. It, she's all about the projectile priority, which you know. I don't know why, you know, I never thought about it saying that as a term. Projectile priority. I don't think I've said that out loud before. Um, but, yeah, the projectile priority <laughs> um, and just the set play that she has can be a little bit more interesting and sometimes, like, way better. Obviously, he can just throw the guns at you or whatever, but he's more about, like, shooting fast and not so much projectile priority, which, you know, I, I want to, like, just go ahead and say, too, like, your launcher is like really good, man. I play launcher too, and like, uh, you're like a by the numbers type of guy. I can see it. Um, the way you play isn't exact. I, I don't want to call it. Um, it's not flow charty, but like you're just extremely efficient. Like is the best way I can describe it. Like you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're extremely efficient. Like you can. You're you're not too like set in your ways to the point where you can't adapt. But um, you recognize the strength of the character. And you run with it like extra hard. You're playing the strengths of the character, uh, plain and simple. Um, but unfortunately, yeah. uh, she's a character with like few strengths, and you know, I, I think that's really what was going on. Because I, I know you said you wanted to talk about what was going on in the matches, and I understand your your mindset. Um, and I just want to like you know uh, talk about a couple points you talked about earlier, and you know then we can like continue on to like Berserker and stuff. Uh, but yeah, sure. Um, a grappler. See, this that's the most I've had. To, the people will be seeing this on YouTube, like the, the all twenty people that watch it, maybe. But um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, they'll they'll be seeing it. But like, this is the hardest I've had to work in neutral with grappler, like ever. Like, I'm not lying. Like, I, I'm sure you've uh, seen yeah. me. You've seen me shimmying. Like, I'm over here. Like, what are you about to do? What yeah, are you about it, to do? It. It's funny because that's what it. That's what it turns into with. Striker, it's actually funny how well, even though Grappler and Striker are completely two different characters, because they are the same class and they have sort of the same 
not really the same kind of moveset, but similar concepts. It, it does turn into the same thing with Striker as well, where she's kind of thinking, well, I do have this one move that'll let me get past 90% of Launcher's moveset, but there's that one move that I can't get past and I have to respect. So I can't just run in there because then I'm going to get caught by this and it's going to lead into, you know, stuff for her. So yeah. what it turns into is like full screen. And it's funny because launcher zoning, like we, we talked about, it's conceptual. It doesn't actually exist. So <laughs> you're both just kind of like going back and forth, you know, almost like Street Fighter. Like, okay, what's yeah. going to happen? What's he going to do? Am I, you know, I'm going to try to bait him to do this and then I'll run in or... Is he going to try to to check me with 5A and I can run and try to jump over that? Like, they're both thinking about what's the best way to approach each other. And that kind of neutral to me, it, it's fun and it, it's uh, hilarious at the same time. Because yeah, because we're like both sweating. To anybody watching, yeah, to anybody watching, just like, what are they doing? I don't, like, somebody move. What's going on? Yeah. But both of the players know that if anybody overcommits, the other person's going to capitalize on that. And, it's really cool when people can like look at that and break it down like oh i understand what's happening i know why they're doing this because they don't want to get hit (laughs) yeah yeah um and boy almighty like the armor i feel like armor like doesn't really do anything when playing against you for the most part because you're so good you got like a dp trigger finger and they're they're probably gonna be saying oh, yeah. that right now. Like I, I'm over here like trying to do my armor move, my shoulder tackle, and my kick, and it's like, oh man, I'm gonna DP at the last possible second. I was actually I was getting a little frustrated, but then I was like, you know what? <laughs> um, at, at this point, he's just using his DP and he's using up his meter, and that's just like how I decided to perceive the situation. Yep. Because yeah, um, and that was uh, that was during the when the phase where I was in the thinking of like trying to not give you any white life to convert at all so when yeah. you were doing that my only response was to react with dp because i didn't want to do something that was going to benefit you after i got you off right uh, but the thing is it's like a it's like a situation where you're going to benefit me regardless it feels like because um at the same time like the more damage you do to me um the more meter i'm getting back yeah uh, uh consequence uh, consequentially I, I think is the right word to use there but yeah um yeah um <laughs> so that was happening and as soon as i noticed that you started to dp more because you weren't doing that the other day when i noticed that shit, i was like yeah i think this is gonna have to be the strat because it seems to be working um that and doing the green foot i don't know what the move is called this is 5m um, and angling it forward, mm-hmm. it just seemed like the best method because, uh, like you were saying, you could jump over her five A situation where she like hits five A and then she does the uh, the follow up to it. You can jump over that situation yep. pretty easy, but with Grappler, he is slow and he has like stubby normals in the air unless you count his uh, uh, jumping S that you can hold and then his foot grows like fifteen feet longer. Um, yeah, you know, and on top of that, Launcher's got extended her boxes like crazy on her moves. yeah so you can you can hit me with that foot and be nowhere near me but because yeah. i press something because it's you know it just hits exactly and um that's what was going through my head when i was playing on a grappler because it was just like okay and if i catch this stray um a five uh tilde what is it five m tilde <laughs> six uh, I guess uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, where I could just like angle it forward. If I have any meter whatsoever, that's turning into like big damage, uh, just because of the nature of grappler. Um, and, and I know you say you're having some trouble with grappler in a tournament. And it's like you know that's understandable. I'm reconsidering the matchup with this character, and now that I'm thinking about it, I think grappler still has the advantage just because of the sheer power he has. I mean, you're sitting there yeah. having to. You have to real quick. Uh, you're you're sitting there having to um, um, conversion cancel just to get a, a combo that carries me all the way to the other side of the screen. While I don't care what side of the screen we're on, as long as I can touch you, you know I'm go- I'm going to end up doing a lot of damage, and it could possibly kill you. I remember one match, uh, one round we did. You had like almost full health, and I touched you once, but it didn't do a lot of damage. But I was like at the end of my life, and I got the right attack, and it killed you. Like all your life was gone. Um, you had like at least seventy-five percent mm-hmm. of life, and 
that's why I say uh, Grappler is just he's dangerous, and I think that you know people underestimate him 100. Um, percent But I, I don't I don't know if there was anything that you could do necessarily in the situations that I was throwing out. Like you handled it as well as you could have, but you know um, I don't know if there's like a uniform way to like actually deal with all the stuff that Grappler can throw at you. So yeah, so. When you had mentioned the grappler that I fought, it was a uh, it was a European grappler. His name is David's LG. Uh, he was streaming. I'll send you the vod for it. He was streaming, uh, and I decided to join in in his lobby uh, yeah. just because I had seen him around a lot in the competitive scene. You know, he's like one of the top EU players. He has been winning tournaments like left and right with grappler, and I, I wanted to like just kind of test him and you know see see what he thinks about. The the match of what you know what he knows that makes it so scary and we played like 10 sets and it, it felt like we played 10 sets in five seconds because every round was just going by like a flash and you know the things that he was doing with grapplers like making me feel like as a launcher player i i literally had no option so one of the things that he does um compared to other grapplers that i fought uh, a lot of grapplers charge all of his moves. They charge his tackle, they charge his grab, charge the foot in the air. This yeah. guy relied on grapplers uncharged stuff a lot more, and it was scary because of how fast it is and how quickly he's able to get close to me. And once grappler is close to launcher, that's it. That's his win condition. Just get close to her. Get her in a block stream because at that point, if she tries to jump, 2S is going to beat her. If she stays on the ground and tries to like, you know, check you, you've got armor moves. So if you space it out, space yourself out properly, her two A is not going to reach you. But the biggest thing about a grappler and the thing that makes him so scary on the ground that I don't see a lot of grapplers use is his uncharged five S, the the grab. That shit is so fast; it is literally unreactable. Yeah, it, it still is. gives um, him a full combo. When he gets it off. Yeah, see, I haven't mastered that it's yet. It's insane. I, I haven't ma- I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I was about to say... Oh, no, no, you're fine. I was just about to say that th- I only use, like, certain uncharged moves. I don't like using the uncharged shoulder tackle because it's, like, minus. And um, it doesn't net you... I don't think it nets you, like, any positive anything. Like, it doesn't push back or anything like the charge one does. Right. Um, it doesn't, but at the same time, it still does have the projectile and vulnerability. Uh, and it has it pretty fast. So, you know, as launcher, she doesn't really have a lot of things that she can get off quickly enough to beat that out. And you end up just going past anything. She tries to do 5B, uncharged tackle. You're in her face right now. She's, you know, it's not her turn anymore. She well, hits you with a uh, missile, uncharged tackle, six test, uncharged tackle. It just it goes through all that shit. It was amazing how much he was just getting past with an uncharged tackle. I'm, I'm sure it was working well for him, but in, in my um, in my situation with my knowledge of the move, I just can't I can't like mentally see it working that well for me in a lot of scenarios. Just for a simple fact of the recovery, you know, like I love to charge past yeah. like a a six S or something, but. It's just not in me because I feel like the recovery wouldn't be worth it. Um, where I could just yeah, like, you you definitely have to like have a game plan for it for sure. Extreme um, Yomi, you have to like can, be you have to be thinking like so many steps ahead. Um, which, yeah, to, I'm telling you, this guy. I'll send you I'll send you the Twitch vlog because I, I have it up now. I'll send you the link so you can watch it later. But you know you'll watch this and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This guy was like always ten steps ahead of me to the point where. I think I was trying to like DP to call out an uncharged 5S and you know just all the other stuff that he was doing and I would just end up DP and like whipping it in neutral because he would sit there and do nothing and he knew that because he knew he was in my head and he had me so afraid that I was looking for things that weren't there and he mentioned that on stream he was like dude you're, you're DPing in neutral and I'm not doing anything like I've got you really terrified right now you got to you gotta calm down, just really pay attention. I was like, hell yeah, I'm terrified. This shit is scary. Like, I don't know what you're gonna do. I you, have no idea what you're gonna do. See, I'm trying to harness that power because, like, I, I there are situations where I have you scared and, like, I'll run up to you and block and I'm like, DP. And I'm like, okay, he's about to DP. And for some reason, I press a button and then your DP works. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> you know? Yep, like, yep. I'm sure you noticed, like, this shit happens a lot. 
And really a thing I was trying to do with Berserker, which I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll get back to the other shit. But um, the thing I was trying to do with Berserker was like trying to master conversion canceling when you um, do your, um, your your guard cancel. Because that was oh, the yeah. real thing yeah, that would have helped me out. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a big thing right there. Her guard cancel. It's a, you know, I think we talked about this last time, too. You're spending 100 meter to get somebody off of you. Only to give them the thing the exact thing they need to get right back in and then your meter that you spent is just wasted yeah if there was a guard roll or a guard cancel roll like it'd be completely different because i'd be using that more because um when you're under pressure um against like launcher specifically she has like some big moves that you know you could take advantage of rolling past like the orb um 5s and uh, other things actually like she has a pretty slow move list I think um, but mm -hmm. I, I will but say it's all about what you're looking for at the time because each one of those moves has a different response and you have to choose the right response for what she's doing if you don't then something else is going to punish you hard right um, but man uh, it sure is interesting because Last time we played, you know, I was thinking, man, I, I'm definitely disadvantaged now. I'm like, nah, I think I got the advantage. I think I just didn't, like, acclimate to the situation correctly. Because, like I said, you're deadly efficient. Um, the other day, you were doing a lot more 5Bs. Um, but today, it seemed like, you know, you're more accurately doing um, pressure with your 5As. Which, 5A is mm -hmm. just, it's monstrous until you figure out you can jump over it. Like... I remember yeah, that. that's that's why I like to say launcher stagger pressure is it's not exist. It doesn't exist. If you if a launcher is sitting there repeatedly checking you with five A, so one thing, her five A right, she can whiff cancel it into her five A, uh, which is the two shots that goes horizontal uh, directly in front of her. Um, but you typically don't want to do that because her hitbox extends so far out, and if somebody for whatever reason Grappler. jumped over that had rolled you know yeah whatever you do you are putting yourself in a situation where you cannot stop what's coming next so typically you know this is like something that you want to do in matchups uh against kuno uh against striker anybody who can get in the air really quickly has very good uh air options against her you only want to check them with 5a once because you need to be able to block if they jump 5a uh, you need to be able to block whatever jump in they're coming from next. Or you need to be able to react with her DP if you're fast enough. Uh, that's a big part of Berserker, too, round start. Launcher can always beat Berserker round start with a 5A. Yeah. Uh, so if a Berserker catches onto that and they're like, okay, well, if you're going to round start 5A me, I'm just going to jump up and, you know, anti-air you. That's why you only use 5A. You never cancel into 5A because if they jump that 5A, you need to be able to recognize that situation immediately and get ready to DP. Because her DP, it is so slow that you cannot use it on reaction. It has to be a read. So if somebody jumps that, you have to be ready to read and DP immediately. Otherwise, you're you know you're just giving up your turn. That's it. They got in because all they did was jump and you weren't ready for it. Right. Um. Gosh, I had it in my head what I was about to say next, and I just forgot because I was watching the gameplay. And I was like, how did that happen? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's not you. It's the gameplay. I was just mesmerized because uh, this is a pretty game, man. But um, it is. Yeah, but I just sent you that pod too, by the way. Okay, gotcha. I'll, I'll have to check it out later. But um, the laser. I noticed you were using the laser a little bit when we were playing too, like trying to knock down my um. Trying to chip me out, and I was like, "Impressive, you know, like, this is, like yeah, you're really, yeah. I, I could get in your head a little bit, like, without even like talking to you." And I, I, I think, I think it's so fun, um, like, just <laughs> acclimating to the matchups in this game is so fun. But I don't know, I don't know if you had anything else to add about like the whole grappler situation. Um, yeah. So another note on that. Uh, that's been my my philosophy on launcher playing her in a zoner type playstyle is uh stacking my life uh recently i've been you know theorizing and testing in matches let me just stack as much white life as i can and let me see 
how much life my opponent is willing to sacrifice to get in on and surprisingly i was fighting a ghost blade last night uh a ghost blade and a hitman you know two characters with advancing normals all they gotta do is advance conversion and they're in right uh, it's a very easy way for them to get in so you know 100 percent they are going to use it every time yeah so i was like all right let me just let me give him the rope and let me see if he's willing to hang himself and that's exactly what he did. Every time he had just a little bit of white life, it, it even had to be a little. It didn't matter how much white life he had. If he had white life, he was going to use an advancing normal and to convert <laughs> to get in on me. And it's funny because the last set that I played against his ghost plate, uh, the first round, he did that. He did advancing normal and then he converted. I blocked the normal and then when he converted, I did DP. So for people who don't know, conversion, you have six frames of recovery where you can't do anything if you choose to do nothing. Uh, so even if he converted and choose to attack melee or just convert it and try to block, because I DP'd, I was <laughs> able to catch him on those conversion recovery frames, and that ended the round. Uh, and then we had the last round, I think we went to round three, uh, the same thing. He uses a to normal, he converted, and I was in the air. So if he recognized that I was in the air, and then he did Ghost Blaze 5S, you know, the, all the wild slashes. And I had called a nuke just before that hit me. You know, launcher calling the nuke is like frame one. So even if you hit her, as long as she had a chance to call it, you know, that nuke is coming in. So yep. because I did that, he was stuck in his long ass 5S animation. He already used his conversion to get in, which means he can't use it again to get out of the situation. And the only thing he could do was just watch as the nuke came down and killed him and that ended the round yeah you know what you mentioning that reminds me of what i wanted to say originally um but um I, i'm gonna go ahead and like <laughs> i'll go ahead and like praise you for like you know having that tech i don't know if you found that out on your own or if you just like made it up but that's a sick tech that oh, i yes. took in, i took it into a uh, combat with my buddy that i've been playing the game with this game with the most and fighting games with since like 2009 um and he was getting frustrated with it. It's a funny thing. Like, you know, <laughs> who wants to use a DP when you can just jump back and do 5M or JM? Yeah, yeah. I tell people that all the time. Her, her nuke is a better reversal than DP because it's like frame one, so it's instant. And if you hit her, you know, as long as you don't have like really low health so they can just kill you quickly before the nuke hits, you have to worry about that. You have to end your combo quickly. Or, you know, stop hitting her and retreat because that nuke is going to come either way. Right. Um, but there is one thing I like to say, and don't take it the wrong way, but I think you might need to, like, <clears throat> I think you might need to, like, work on um, the reaction that you do when you recover in the air because I, I couldn't really get it down in the earlier matches with Grappler. But I noticed, like, when you mm -hmm. tech in the air, you go for jumping M, and it's like... Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. All the time. I know I'm guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's a great move. I understand why you go for it, but, like, I think there was, like, one or two uh, matches where I think I caught you with Grappler, and I was like, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. it's like, I, I kind of yeah, knew so you were going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the only one who does that, too. I, I play another person. Uh, Stance has to Diddy. He uses Vanguard. He caught on to that too. And so he intentionally leaves me in the air and he'll let me call Nuke and then he'll do Vanguard's DP, which you know hits pretty much everywhere in the air. And because it's like an animation, he gets out of my Nuke free and I just wasted 90 mana for, for nothing. Yeah, it so, costs a lot. Yeah, you're not the only one who does that to me. Yeah, it, co <laughs> it costs a lot. But I, I'm like, yo, I need to do that a lot more to you because, man, it's effective. Like, you're doing something yeah. effective, but, like, it's, like, one of those situations where it's, like, if you know how to get out of it, like, you gotta, like, burn it into your mind or something. Because it's, like, super yeah, but good. That's also where that's also where the mind games can start, too, right? Because I could also condition you to always think that I'm going to do that. And then one game, I could probably just fall with my invincibility. And then you're waiting for something that's just not going to happen. And then you got to quickly, like, okay, well, he didn't do it, so let me, let me hurry up and take advantage of him just falling to the ground yeah so, and yeah in most cases it's probably still going to be your turn but it's also something that i could kind of use to be like oh nope you thought i was going to nuke i'll just fall to the ground and i might fall to the ground and then wake up dp you know it's like 
<laughs> there's yeah. a little there's a little mind game there. Well, listen, man, I don't know what you're talking about because DNF Duel has no depth whatsoever, so I don't even know what the hell you just said to me. <laughs> right? Ga game yeah, is easy, game, game is free. Anything, any sort of interactions like that. None yeah. at all. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's easy, it's free, uh, dumb, you know, like, it's just all that shit. But, uh, I actually, I didn't, I didn't, like, switch it over to, like, our last couple matches with Launcher at, uh, Grappler actually switched to Launcher and Berserker now, in case you were wondering what the audience will be watching. But um, okay, yeah, 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 because um, I think I think we were done yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what I wanted to go back to was just uh, going back to Ranger and Launcher's full screen presence and the differences. So we already discussed, you know, Launcher's is like projectile priority. She's using that as a way to like stop you from throwing stuff at her. Uh, but not really to zone you and keep you out because it's, it's easy enough to get past. Whereas Ranger, you know, Ranger, uh, his 5B, I don't know if you've noticed, like two of his 5Bs will almost deplete an entire bar of your guard meter. So Ranger, when he's zoning you, the pressure is he's hitting with this fast normal. It's, it's a normal, so it's free, full screen normal, and you cannot sit there and block it all day because he only needs a few of those to get you to like half of your guard bar and at that point you're like panicking because you're like oh shit all he has to do is just run up to me and throw like a gun hog and i'm fucking you know i'm fucking dead i gotta do something i can't i can't sit here and take these five b's so then it becomes immediately you know on the opponent to like stop him from doing that whereas launcher she has nothing like that you have nothing to be worried about i've been fighting some people recently uh kato ken He's a striker. I've seen him on rank uh, sometimes. And uh, Tinder Neal, you know, top hitman player, who has surprised me in the fact that they're comfortable sitting full screen with launcher because anything I throw at them, they can either jump over it, they can duck it, they can dodge roll it. You know, if I try to call a nuke to keep them from, you know, just sitting back and they have to, like, try to run for it. They can jump the nuke. The nuke hitbox, if you look at it it's on this loop, it doesn't go very high at all. No, it's so horrible. So they could just wait for the nuke, and last second, just jump over it. So when you really think about it, you could just sit there full screen and not be afraid of anything she has to do. Like, the scariest thing she has full screen is the laser, and that costs 50 mana. So if I use two of those, I'm exhausted. And you could use that opportunity to then just run in on her. She has nothing like Rangers 5B to threaten you to move closer to them. Right. Right, right, right. So so interesting, man. So interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep. It's, yeah, it's just really interesting. <laughs> it's so interesting, like, all the things that you just said and, like, how you describe Because I never even thought about Rangers um, 5B. Like, I thought about how much of guard stamina it takes. But like, you know, the way you described it in contrast to Launcher, because I don't know how much she takes with her um, with her normals. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't it's, think it's about not, it. It's not a lot. Like, yeah. Her normals not. that do take a lot is uh, her JB takes a lot of guard bar, but her JB is also a very awful jump in unless you have conversion. Like, you're just begging for somebody to take their turn if you jump in with that. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the matchup with the Berserker? So, I'm, I wanted to talk about that too. Uh, I fight Flowchart Ken a lot. Uh, he's, I think, number six deity right now. Uh, very good Berserker. And, you know, the matches that I played against him, I might have talked about him before. Uh, the matches I play against him, you know, we kind of go back and forth, but it's through fighting him that I really learned how much advantage Launcher does have over Berserker because his whole thing is he needs to be in Frenzy to be an effective character and if he's not able to do that, he's really slow and he has a hard time getting in on her but Berserkers, all the time I fight a Berserker, they always want to back up and get in Frenzy first and then yeah. engage what you did differently was you you noticed that I was waiting for that and like punishing you or setting something up where you're in frenzy. Yeah, you got in frenzy when you backed up, but now there's a grenade. Now I'm throwing all this shit out there and you can't approach safely and every every second that you're wasting, you're losing your life in frenzy. 
which is exactly what Launcher wants you to do. She wants you to retreat and go in frenzy so that she has time to set up and force you to, to jump in or, you know, do something unsafe because you don't want to lose all that life. So I've been thinking about that matchup a lot when I fight Ken and other Berserkers. And the way that you played it is exactly how I feel like it should be played. Berserker should try to approach her the same way that any other character would approach her. Every character has the same ability to get past her zoning, to get past, you know, five ace actors, like I said before. You can just jump over those for free. And I think that Berserker really needs to engage with her first and, like, act Activate Frenzy in a block stream or activate it after getting some kind of Oki. Something where he knows, yeah, something that he knows that he's safe to enter it and he's safe to approach afterwards. Instead of retreating full screen and activating Frenzy, that's exactly what I want you to do if that is what they try to do. I think Ken's been catching on to that recently, uh, so he's been altering his approach, but the way that you were playing it, that's exactly how I think it should be played. Yeah, because, I mean, he does have that dive. And, I mean, he has a great jumping S. Um, I feel like it extends his hurt box, like, a little bit. And that's why I get hit by your 5 AA um, a mm-hmm. couple of times. But um, it extends, like, it, that move reaches so far and causes such hit stun on counter hit. And not only that, but you can also cancel it into the dive, which it doesn't work out so well for his uh, jumping B. Um, in most circumstances that I've played with him in. But, yeah, those two moves go so well together, and it just seems like the best counter that you're going to get with Berserker versus Launcher in a tight quarter situation because, uh, well, for all the reasons you just said, you can get in, you can do what other characters can do, and you can end up buffing yourself later. Now, I like to jump back and buff myself initially at the beginning of the match if you'll allow me. And notice I say if you'll allow me because, you know, as I'm speaking, um, at the beginning of the round that we just did, you ran up to me. And that's kind of like an issue, you know? It's <laughs> yeah. like I should be yeah. running up to you. And I think I, at that point, it was when I noticed, like, you know what? Yeah, I need to, like, get closer. Like, you shouldn't be, this isn't even your archetype. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. You're not I'm not, to be I'm not doing the one shit. that's pressuring you. It should be the other way around. Yeah. And um, as a, you know, as you were saying that, I actually caught you during your five uh, M there. I caught you doing a five M that I did a dive to finish it. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Berserker, he's an interesting fellow, man. I, I can't see how people, you know, and I say this all the time, and I'll continue to say it as long as the narrative goes on. People can say this game is like boring when you have a character like this around. <laughs> you know, like he creates RCs, he creates conversion cancels anytime he wants. Like, how's that not yep, badass? Yep. How's that not unique or interesting? And it, it's it's uh and it's him and it's Hitman or not Hitman. It's him and it's a uh, troubleshooter. Uh, troubleshooter who like a, a issue with the balance in this game is that certain characters take advantage of system mechanics way better than everybody else to the point where it's like if berserker didn't have access to conversion as freely as he does just imagine how much lower he would be on tier list like yeah he's got frenzy but frenzy would kill him and you know he's not getting into the life to use for conversion so you know he wouldn't be able to be as safe as he is but because he has access to conversion the entire time he's in frenzy that's where he gets these long combos these long block streaks you know safe pressure where you know if somebody tries to guard cancel out when he's in frenzy that is a huge risk to them because he can notice that he can convert and then block the guard cancel and punish you for it like it's very risky to try and guard cancel a berserker when he's in frenzy you uh, have to know exactly the right time to do that. Right. And, you know, uh, I want to touch back on something you said earlier about him um, being that, you know, it's bad that, you know, he loses health. But honestly, depending on what way you look at it, it could be a good thing because he can get that health back. And uh, if you fight the right Berserker and you get their health down all the way down to the threshold of Awakening, you could actually use that to um, your advantage and get most of your health back be an awakening and every time you hit uh, your opponent you just gain life you know yeah so that that is one aspect to it but there was something it's a double-edged else sword. Uh, yeah because 
there's like his his passive is good for him, but at the same time, it does mess up some setups that he has. I think it does. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was, but I was I was reading some stuff that Ken was saying other berserkers, and it's like, yeah, he gets health back, but there's some things that he that he actually needs, you know, the lower health for. I think it's conversion stuff. stuff yeah, like, yeah, it's certain conversion combos stuff. that he does that he gets health back faster than he loses it, so he loses access to a lot of that conversion. Yeah, but that's like the price of doing business, if you ask me. I'm I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah. Um, personally, like I know I'm not the main berserker guy. I'm not the guru or anything. But honestly, you know, take what you can get. If you're down to that point and you're constantly losing life, and you have like the option to get these normals that are upgraded, you know, uh, it's okay that you don't get to do your pseudo infinite the entire time. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and because chances are. You know, yeah, he's losing health, but at the same time, chances are he's also made you lose as much health as him. But then he gets to get all that health back, and you don't. Yeah, it's a like I said before, it's a double-edged sword, and it's just something that um, you know you have to live with as a berserker player. Um, honestly, you know, like it's never going to get that much different. Uh, look at Ragna and yeah. plays blue. You know, I mean, Ragna he could just like get health like from doing his drive attacks. You know, which is like exactly that's an upgrade, you know. But um, you know, he has like no caveats on his shit, honestly, other than some of his attacks not having like the same um combo ability. Like I think his um I'm not familiar with Blaze Will you are, but um uh Ragna's DP when he uses the dry version, it actually doesn't have frame one and vulnerability, so he can't get combos. I think off that I shit. do remember that. Yeah, I think I do remember that. Yeah, so like it you know, it's a push and pull thing, you know. Um, and maybe mm -hmm. I'm just assuming too much. I don't, I don't know if you said that uh, they complain about it or anything, but I think that's completely fine. Oh yeah, no, no, it's not that they uh, they complain about it. It's just you know, while being a very good passive, at the same time he does lose something that you know he had been doing the entire match essentially. Yeah. And he doesn't like it doesn't go away. He has to use his super so he can get back to that point of. You know, being able to do conversion stuff normally again, but then he lost his super, he lost his pass. I mean, it's it's a push and pull. Yeah. Um. But, Lord, such a such a crazy game. Um. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> like I, I really like talking about it. This is this is so many things, so many situations, and we're gonna be looking back in a like a year from now when this shit is like actually like across the board like $30 and it has like it's first season of DLC characters going to be like man oh, yeah. those motherfuckers are so popping stupid off then. <laughs> yeah people are going to be uh -huh. popping off and yep. we're going to be beating their ass like alright where's our sponsorship nah I don't know <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh man exactly but um yeah oh. so you're good oh, go ahead no you go ahead um what I was going to mention you know a lot of my theorizing lately uh started because uh i don't know if you know anton uh inquisitor player no um he recently started picking up launcher as like a, a side character and he's been realizing the struggles that launcher players go through and it's you insane. know he's been <laughs> yeah he's been asking questions and stuff but i've been observing you know the matches that he asked for the people and you know his post match discussion <laughs> it's like what what do you mean I'm minus there? Like, this character can't act <laughs> out of text, uh, tech graphs, you know? Like, all the <laughs> stuff that I would normally say to myself, like, it, it just feels funny watching somebody else <laughs> come to those <laughs> same conclusions. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, she can't do any of that. Yeah, that's a thing. Yep. That's yeah. Still only against her. It's like... <laughs> that, that reminds me of, like, me and my friend and, like, that I've had since 2009 we've been playing fighting games and shit um he <laughs> has um he, he plays with ghost blade a little bit too he only played with him after i played with him i told him he might like him but like he started playing with ghost blade and then he was just like you know upset that he couldn't get out the corner so easy or dp and it's like yep that's the price of doing business with that character if you can't um mm -hmm. if you can't like you know find a good spot to guard cancel or just simply counter somebody because you don't have like the slowest normals in the game like you know you're not um launcher and you're not grappler when it comes to like a startup or anything so 
right, you know right. you have to you have to just find that fucking that point man and i know it hurts but <laughs> and you also have to consider you know yes he doesn't have a dp but would it really be fair if he had a dp and he also had a teleport that he could convert and instantly cover this massive amount of screen you know real estate and be safe and it's his turn because he teleported converted it's his turn he's in your face anything that you just tried to do he just skipped all of that like it's a great neutral skip option like yeah. would it really be fair to give a character who has that a dp no um and i think more along the lines of i'm sorry i think he wants more along the lines of like not a dp with it but like just free and vulnerability with the teleport which i teeter back and forth on like really i'm more like uh, maybe frame one upper to mid body and vulnerability it has to be low type situation um yeah like that, that's what I i'm think thinking even more so that you know his his teleport wouldn't really need to be touched if the defensive options in this game were better and that's something that we touch on all the time yeah because in this game is just like it's non-existent right uh it's basically his teleport functions as like a fucking another role you know what i mean and nope. <laughs> yeah like it's just like a faster roll and like honestly it needs to be different uh but yeah defensive options in this game do not reflect the um the offensive options you know um I, and he told me that somebody had mentioned that before and i was like yeah i dig that and what my friend told me was um you know basically for all the stuff that happens in this game it's like there are things that happen in DNF Duel where it's like it feels like there should be like an air dash or some shit, you know. And mm-hmm. it's like you know, I kind of understand that a little bit, you know. Like when Launcher shoots yeah. that red orb, I kind of want air dash a little bit, <laughs> like well, right you over. You know what? Shit. Yeah, we we already <laughs> we don't even have to theorize about that. We have a character who Dragon already Knight. has that Dragon yep. Knight. Yep. <laughs> like Dragon Knight can just air dash over that shit, and it's real. It gets her past it. Yeah, and she'll shoot this fucking heavy, the heaviest priority, the quickest, heaviest priority fucking move I've ever right. seen in my and life. It's such a huge explosion afterwards. It's yeah. Like, that's the just only option two parts. is to roll forward. Yeah. yeah. The only option is to roll forward, but if you do that, you fell for her trap card, because now she's going to cancel into flight and then drop down and overhead you for free. Right, exactly. Exactly, man. Dragon Knight. I do like Dragon Knight though. I, I like there's so many characters that I, I love every character on this game in all honesty. Um I think every mm. character in this game has like something unique and something familiar at the same time that could um that could be uh, likened to other characters in fighting games. You know what I mean? Yeah, they did a they did a really good job with making sure there was not one character or two characters who felt the exact same you know there may be characters in this game that you can make an argument yeah this character does this but this character does it better you know but yeah they at the end of the day they did a really good job of making every single character in this game unique which you know says something because the source material of this game is pretty much the same way i would say i've I've never played dfo but there's been a lot of discussion about it from people who have played it and who have played you know play this game and you know they always say that the translations that they made from the characters from their dfo uh counterparts is like almost one-to-one like it's like they did a very good job of translating them into a fighting game yeah uh i would say so because i mean i don't have my favorite character yet and i'm gonna keep making content until i become you know favored by nexon and they fucking put my favorite character in there uh, which is rogue she's a <laughs> she's a thief class so she's like um kunoichi but um uh-huh yeah because i like knife characters like i told you i like hazama i like shiki i like all them motherfuckers yosuke they're, they're my guys <laughs> you know what i mean i get down oh, with yeah. all of them but um <laughs> yeah they like i did uh pick up kunoichi when i um seen that she got announced and like i played her on dn uh yeah dnf just regular as dnf or dfo whatever um, I picked her up. She's interesting. Um, the only thing I'll say is some of the stuff they didn't put in the game, I understand why, because it's actually ridiculous. Like, Kunoichi, for instance, <laughs> on DFO, she could do multiple special moves at once. Like, she would have an after image do 
special moves while you. How do I? How do I say this? Oh. So she can go into a uh, mode that, that already sounds broken. Yeah, she could go into a mode where, like, let's say, let's use the context of this game, right? So let's say she activated a mode where she could uh, start charging her uh, fireball that she spits, uh, start charging the toad, and throw the fi the tornado at the same time. And all that shit happens that at would once. Be and it, broken. Yeah, that would be nuts. <laughs> but th what they did instead was actually pretty good because she still can charge her stuff up, um, which is like still very interesting to me. Like it's crazy. Like um, how even though they made some concessions, they still come off really great. And it's like if I were to imagine a fighting game um, out of that uh, series, it definitely would be this. You know. Like everything's yeah. fairer, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Th I think in that case, you know, yeah, this game does have some balancing issues that I I feel like they are going to address. So when they said that there's going to be the balance patch in December and that there's also a surprise, of course, you know, people are expecting the surprise to be DLC, and it most likely is probably going to be DLC. Yeah, but at the same time. You know, it would also be nice if the surprise was them, like, uh, announcing some kind of change to the mechanics of the game. That's not too drastic, but would, you know, alleviate a lot of these problems that people are noticing. Well, um, buddy. That's probably the least likely, th least like, uh, least least likely, likely yeah. option. It happens. <laughs> but uh, I, it, it's either going to be DLC, Spectre for sure, or Female Slayer. Oh, my or God. Yeah. Crossplay. We need Spectre. Like, they need to, like, not bullshit with this. And, like, they need to see uh, what people want in their community. They need to see... Oh, that's they need that's to... all everybody talks about is Spectre. And right. Later. I understand, but here's the thing. Do they understand that, you know? I don't want a situation where yeah. it's like... I seen on Tekken uh, Twitter the other day, uh, which is my favorite fighting game franchise, Tekken... Um, I seen that uh, the head producer, uh, Katsuhiro Hirata, had said to somebody who was requesting a character that uh, all the characters have already been decided, you know, basically telling them that it was futile. And I was yeah. just thinking to myself, like, motherfucker, you know, you and I tweeted, I said, Pimpin, you, <laughs> yeah, you don't ask me for shit. huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, it's like, Pimpin, you made four seasons of Tekken 7. How are you telling this dude that there's no way that this is going to happen? Or the characters have been decided more rather like you can make another season whenever you uh as long as you're d being successful are you saying that you're not doing dlc because i call bullshit on that you know yeah but yeah, exactly i mean they could go as long as they want honestly, yeah because it's going to make money tekken is a very big franchise yeah except when my favorite uh tekken tekken tag 2 actually didn't make them that much money Dude. And, and then they tag two had everybody. Yeah, everybody and, was in that game. It was great. It was my favorite. Listen, bro. They say that game uh, almost stopped Tekken, and I think it's a lie. And the Tekken community, <laughs> Tekken community is such. They have so many sack eaters. Like they actually believe them. The reason why I don't believe them is because Tekken before Tag Two sold over forty-two million games. Over 42 million games. Like, what wow, other yeah. franchise did that shit? <laughs> Why would you say... Exactly. Oh, this game didn't sell more than 2 million copies after the first year, <clears throat> so it's a failure. Like, all right, fine. Like, it didn't hit the target, but at the same time, you uh, did bro, better than most yeah, fucking Tekken games. Tekken Tag 2. Tekken yeah. Tag 2. That is the game. Like, oh my god. They literally brought... It. That's like the Smash Ultimate of Tekken. Yeah. And not only that, all the remixes of classic songs they do. Moonlight Wilderness Remix, the DTO, I love, love that shit. The Tekken Tag Team, that's my favorite yeah. version of that song. Yeah, it, it's it's awesome, man. It was an awesome time, but um, and I love to talk about that sometime. But I I, I gotta get back to the DLC thing. Um, I, I went off track there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I need them to like, <laughs> and I did polls on my YouTube, and again, I didn't have that many people participating. Like the most I had at one time was probably like. Uh, 50 maybe 70 and like uh, most of the time it was like 20 30 you know but people really want specter people really want um my favorite rogue you know what i'm saying i don't know if it's because i convinced them or what but they want um 
they want dragon what is it what's that dude's shit uh vanguard he's like a dragon slayer or some shit i forget the name of it in all honesty but they want so many characters and they can deliver on it they just need to um they, they just need to know that they need to listen to the people. They can't just be making random-ass decisions, you know? <laughs> yeah, this, this game has so much potential purely because of its source game having so many characters, like, built up over so many years. I, I don't know, how long how, uh, has DFO been running? It's been... 2005, I think. Really long time, yeah. Yeah, there are so many awakenings and different versions of classes that they can pull from, they could easily make four seasons of DLC for this game if they wanted to. If like, they wanted very to, easily. If they wanted to make skins, I would buy that shit. And I know a bunch of people that would. There's a bunch of people that want to buy the third Awakening skins and shit. You know, because these are like the... I think they're the first Awakenings? They're all first Awakenings. You know? And mm-hmm. I think they look cool, personally. I'm like a more of a minimalist when it comes to that shit. I think that the first Awakenings... Uh, generally look better than the other stuff, but you know there are some exceptions. But they could do so much, and they could appease so many people, and people would buy it. People would legit buy it, and they would be adding yeah. more diversity to the game's portfolio. You know, like uh, there's one um, magician. The mages are highly requested. People will love the mages. Um, you think Swiftmaster was popular? Wait till they fucking get Elemental Bomber. This motherfucker starts shooting ice, fire, lightning all over the screen or something. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah, man. Like, they can literally do so much. And I think that, you know, not trying to throw mud at Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, but, um, you know, I think they could do a lot more with this series than they did with Final, uh, Final Fantasy, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. But that's just me. Yeah, they could. They, they 100% could because they just, they have so much to pull from. It just doesn't make sense why they wouldn't, like, Unless Nexon just hates money, there's no reason not to put in. Okay, and they, like I said before, they have done a phenomenal job of making every single character in this game feel unique and different. And it's just like, why not keep going with that? Right, right. Man, I get so fired up talking about this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, man. People just don't know. They yeah, because in December know. there's so much of this. Uh, there is, and come December, hopefully we just see like a trailer. And if they do the Melty Blood route, we might be eating for a long time because if they go the Melty Blood route and they're like, "Hey, first DLC character is free." Sorry for whatever the fuck you babies are complaining about. You know what I mean? Like that's the yeah. what Melty Blood mm-hmm. did, <laughs> and it fucking worked yep. like a all charm. The, all, all the people, all the people who had to suffer through you know months of the uh peaking player count being like no higher than 72 at a time like i literally i can't remember the last time i saw it go over 72 players man yeah uh for this game like like i said man after two months it dropped off hard like i first two months i couldn't keep motherfuckers out of my lobby to like have a friend join a free lobby you know but Mm -hmm. third third month when they did, I want to say like right before the patch, they dropped off hard, but Lord Almighty! Oh yeah, uh, yo, a new patch with everybody buffed. I need to see what these buffs are. I really do. I need to see what these buffs are. I need to get my my goggles on it. You know, I want to see what the hell these guys are thinking about. You know. Yeah, that was something that um, I wanted to mention too. I was talking to another another player, uh, top troubleshooter player and he was fighting uh this kunorichi player that i know called phase i don't know if i've talked about him before oh, I, know, I think i have I know the phase. yeah playstation all-stars player yeah 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 so he was fighting him and like uh after they were done you know he was saying something you know about <laughs> kuno being bullshit which in most cases i would agree she is kind of a bullshit character but who is i approached it as uh kunorichi Oh, yeah. But I approached it as, uh, you know, it's not that she's overpowered or too strong, but she's a character who, in my opinion, is just perfect. She has the tools to handle pretty much anything, and she's that type of character in a game with other dysfunctional characters who have, you know, big glaring weaknesses and who are not as versatile as her. So when this buff-only patch comes... 
I think characters like Kunoichi, they're not going to touch, and they're just going to focus on bringing up the, the people who are struggling to her level so that everybody is enjoying the same kind of game. Right. He, he kind of disagreed off, you know, he was listening off things that she has that are a little bit too strong, and, you know, I agreed. I was like, yeah, if you put Kunoichi in, you know, or if you put any of these characters in, like, a normal balanced fighting game, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be too strong because a lot of this stuff is ridiculous. But at the same time, them announcing that they want to do bus only and no nurse tells us that this is their vision for the game. That's exactly how they want Kuno to play, and they're not going to change it. They said they weren't going to change it because they're right. only going to do buffs. Right. So we need to not focus on what we think is you know, oh this is too strong. They need to nerf this. You know, blah blah blah. We need to focus on, okay, they obviously want the game to play like this. If these characters are good, then what qualities of these characters can transfer to the characters that, you know, are dysfunctional? Characters that don't seem complete. How can they make these incomplete characters feel like these characters who, in our opinion, are too oppressive? Right. And you know what? Um, I completely agree with you. Um, just for the simple fact that, um, you know, FaZe is a much better Kunoichi player than I'll ever be, uh, probably, but, um, I do play with Kunoichi. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do play with Kunoichi, and honestly, what you said is just is spitting facts, man. I mean, like, I, I couldn't have explained it any better. I think that she embodies, like, what DNF Duel, uh, should be for every character, you know? It should be this fun. There should be these many, um... Uh, options there should be um all these things that are um matchup specific that you need to know like you need to know never to fucking teleport when vanguard is on the screen because he's going to fucking dp you you know the stuff like that mm -hmm. is, is is something that you need to know um to be an effective kunoichi player and even though he is uh the worst character in the game you know, um, voted by many people. I mean, well, one of the worst, one of the two worst. Um, you have to keep that in mind, or else, like, one of the best vanguards is gonna push your shit in, and nobody wants that, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, but, uh, yeah exactly. Like, for Kunoichi, you can list off all the stuff she has gapless pressure, resets, guard break sequences. Yeah, all that stuff is really strong, but at the same time, it's not just like you pick up this character and you instantly win. It's not like pre-patch Swiftmaster, you know? Pre-patch Swiftmaster was an actual problem. That guy was way too strong, even for this game. But Kunoichi, in my opinion, in order to get that strong of her, you have to understand how she works. You can't just, like you said, throw out teleports because somebody's going to catch on to that and they're going to punish you. She has things that are punishable. It's just when she's mixing up her options like this, you know, that's when she becomes a good character. And I think that's really what everybody else in this game who is considered low tier is missing. They don't they don't have the privilege of mixing up their options like that. You know, their their approaches may be a little bit more straightforward, or they may just have one thing that completely obliterates their gameplay. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um Man, uh well, I think we're going to have to stop the recording here because I ran out of matches with us and now I'm fighting this deity ghost blade that was... I'm trying to think. I think he was pissing me off because I was like, you ever fight somebody <laughs> You ever fight somebody on a fighting game, particularly this game right now, where like you see them do shit and it's like you know that shit isn't real or it's not effective, but it works for them and you're like, Ooh! you know? All the time. Yeah, what'd you say? All the time. All especially the time, yeah. especially as a launcher player. <laughs> I see that all the time. You like because, it? like, with how many matches I have with launcher, like, I understand a lot of the cast more so better than people who are playing it. Like, you have to really know that character if you're trying to beat me. But even at a basic level sometimes, I just get opened up by shit that I know I shouldn't be opened up by. And it, <laughs> it does get a little tilty. Yeah, it's like, man, I want to throw my fucking controller. Like, if I can do this shit the entire time, why won't it work when I do it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but this has been pretty productive, guys. Um, if you want, um, you know, definitely like, follow, subscribe, whatever the hell you're doing right now. Um, check out Jax Vex. He streams on Twitch uh, very often. 
Uh, I don't know how much he gets on YouTube, but you know he has a YouTube channel as well. Uh, I'll be putting that in the description. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to push some of my vods from Twitch onto YouTube just so that they're preserved there as well. So I think for this game, we definitely have to preserve as much as we can in these early days. Yeah, because there's gonna be a time where we're gonna have to defend this game when we're older men, and we're gonna have to like mm -hmm. show people the videos, you know. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. 